You've got mail. Hello. Today I took the package from the post office, and at home when I unpacked it, I had an unpleasant surprise. The clothing is not. Inside the package was cardboard and a piece of large cloth. The commanded and weighted clothes is not. I don't know why. What happened? You take the mistake, or the product was stolen on the road? Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Heather and I'm an online reseller. It has been a pretty crazy three weeks on eBay. It just seems sometimes with problems with buyers that when it rains, it storms. And unfortunately, this storm seems to have been with all of my international packages that have been going out. I had one person that emailed me and said that they hadn't received their item and it was to Russia, of course, which this happened, I think, maybe two weeks after the invasion happened. And they said that, of course, they had not received their item. Unfortunately, it had been two months at this point, and so I did go ahead and give them back their money. They did have really good feedback, and so I don't think that they were scamming me. And I was able to get my money back from the insurance on the package from the eBay International shipping. So that one turned out to not be so bad. I actually got my money back from the insurance on that one before I actually even had refunded the seller. So that was really nice and fairly painless. Uh, but the next day after this Russian buyer was complaining about not getting their package was the day that I got the message from this buyer who happened to be in Moldova. And I thought, it's a little ironic here. We've got this invasion going on and now my package to Russia is having problems. Now my package to Moldova, which is just south of Ukraine, is also having problems. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I was dealing with both of those packages and then along the same time I sent a package to Canada which I ended up having to give them back their money and I was out like $30. But for now, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about what happened with this buyer in Moldova so that we can all learn a little bit about what to do when we do get scammed and how to stop people from doing it in the future. Fortunately, I have watched a lot of other videos on YouTube and I know and am wiser now that this is actually a really common scam that people are pulling where you send an item to them and then they claim that they didn't receive it, that either the package was empty or instead there was a rock or a piece of cardboard, or it sounds like somebody has also said a piece of wood, whatever it happens to be, but it's, you know, not the actual item that was sent. So it was a huge red flag to me that this was definitely going to be a scammer. So I wanted to be sure, and I wanted to do some research first. So I started slowly asking this buyer different questions to get evidence of what was actually going on. I just wanted to prolong it until I could figure out what to do about the situation. Unfortunately, with this buyer, I actually had sent them two packages. I sent them one package that had two outfits in it, and then the same day they've had another order and they bought just one little t-shirt from Oshkosh. So now I have to figure out which package it was that they got. Did they get the second package? You know, what's going on with the situation? So. I messaged them and said, you know, did you get both packages? Was this just one package? Which package was it? Was it the package that was supposed to have two? You know, can you give me the tracking number off of the package and a little bit more information about this package? So she did give me the tracking and said that it was supposed to be the package that had the two items in it which is unfortunate because of course that was a lot more money than the one little t-shirt. So then I asked her if she could send me a picture of the front of the package, the back of the package, and the contents inside of the package. Because I wanted to see, you know, had this really been ripped? I mean, what are the odds that somebody would have intercepted this package, taken out the contents, and then taken the time to go and put something else inside of it and tape it back up? I mean, this just sounds like really bogus. Like, I can't believe that people even are pulling the scam to begin with because it's just so unrealistic that somebody would actually do that if you were going to steal something. I mean, most likely it would just never come, right? So I emailed and I asked her for these packages and these are the package pictures that I got in response. So if you notice here on this first one, it still looks taped just the way that I taped it. None of the seams are broken. There's no additional tape on the package. Then on the front of the package, the same thing. It looks just like when I sent it, except for the additional postage 
sticker that they put on it because of international shipping. But yeah, everything looked fine and it did confirm that it was the package that had the two items. As you can see, they're listed off on the side right there. And then the best part of these packages is picture number three. And I don't know if any of you guys have noticed, but this is definitely not a piece of cardboard and a large piece of cloth. I don't know about you, but to me, it sure looks like a towel and a hoodie. So yet again, clearly this lady is just lying or this person, I don't know if it's lady or not, but they're just lying through their teeth. And during these emails going back and forth where I'm trying to be really calm and professional, she's just going on and on about how, you know, this is not my fault. This, you know, probably was, you know, something, maybe it was related to the war. Maybe somebody stole it. Maybe it was your mistake, but whatever it was, it wasn't my fault. So you definitely should give me back my money. And then, you know, at one point she was telling me, well, didn't you put insurance on this? Can't you just claim insurance and get your money back? And I'm like, yeah, clearly this is something she's done previously that she knows you know, to go and get your money back for insurance, which unfortunately I couldn't do in this case because she did receive it and the tracking showed that she got it. So I wouldn't be able to do anything there anyways because that wasn't the problem here. She did get the package. And of course, throughout all of these messages, every time she ended with, you know, demands, give me back my money. If you don't give me back my money, then I'm going to give you negative feedback. I'm going to make a complaint on eBay and on PayPal, which of course makes no sense because surely she wasn't using PayPal. So I don't know why she threw PayPal in there. Maybe this has been a really long thing and she's pulled this scam for years. I don't know. So while all this is going on, I've actually taken the time to go and do some research and I went and looked on her feedback. I did this pretty early on and noticed that even though she had 44 feedback, which seemed really promising, right? This seems like a substantial buyer on the platform. You'd think that if they were a scammer, they would have only had a couple of feedback and then they would have gotten kicked off. But no, she had 44. I'm like, okay, well that looks promising because now on eBay, I'm sure a lot of you are aware that you can only leave positive feedback as a seller for your buyer. So this person had their positive feedback for her, but then it said, do not send to her location. It will never arrive. Claim to refund after I shipped with tracking. So it sounded like she got it. The uh, tracking said that it had gotten there, but then she claimed it didn't get there. It never arrived and she wanted her money back and they in turn did give her a refund. So not a good sign right there. And then a couple of pages back, there's another feedback that essentially is talking about how they sent the lady this item and they got it and claimed that nothing was in the package except for a piece of wood. And they were like, well, you know, the item weighed this much, how much did the wood weigh? And the lady was like, well, of course, it weighed the same amount as the item that they had sent to her. And they were like, yeah, this looks really suspicious. What are the odds that she's going to get a piece of wood that's the exact same weight as the item that they had shipped to her? And I think that this was a company that was out of like China or something. But out of those feedback, there were already two circumstances right there. And when she is claiming to me, I've never had anything like this happen before. I just don't know what's going on. You know, it's like, hmm, your feedback says otherwise, right? So in the end, I wasn't really sure what to do. You know, I knew that there was a really high chance that she was not going to open a case against me because most scammers are not going to want to open a case because if they open cases, it's a big red flag to eBay and eBay's going to pick up on a lot of cases. You know, if you're opening a case for every single item that you receive and you're getting a refund, it's going to send a big red flag to eBay and they're going to pick up on it and they're going to kick you off because obviously you're a scammer. And so I think most scammers are avoiding that at all possible. And then of course they're threatening feedback. And I just thought, you know, surely they don't want to give feedback either because as a seller, I can go and I can look at their feedback that they've left for other people. And if they're constantly, you know, calling out sellers for these problems, then another big red flag is gonna go up. And people are going to get upset and they're gonna to go to eBay to try to get that feedback removed, which is going to put more attention on them as a scammer. So I kind of started thinking, maybe I should just ignore them and hope that they go away because like I said, the odds of them opening a case or leaving feedback are probably slim. And so let's just write it out and see what happens. I also did a little bit of research on the buyer. I went and I actually messaged some of the other sellers that had sold to her that I could see in her feedback. And I asked, you know, this is what's happening to me. Did anything happen to you with this transaction or did it go fine? 
And I did this for probably 10 different sellers and the ones that got back to me all said they had done similar things. And there were a couple of companies, of course, that were like, we can't share information about our seller or our buyers. And so they wouldn't say anything, but one did say, I can't share any information, but we did block her. So you knew something was up there. So everybody had negative things to say. A lot of people had turned around and given her back her money because either she didn't get it, she was claiming, or because she got something different. There was actually one poor seller that had had this person buy three different items from her. And she actually sent me the messages for all of it and she was pretty frustrated. So it turns out that this buyer in Moldova purchased an item from her and then when she got it, she claimed that she didn't receive it even though the tracking said that it did and the seller just didn't think anything of it and thought, oh well, it happens and gave her back her money. Well, not long after that, then they bought a second item and of course, when they got it the second time, now they're claiming that they got a piece of cardboard. They didn't get the item, they got a piece of cardboard and so, of course, the seller at this point knows that she's getting scammed by this person. And so she ended up opening a case and I think that the person ended up getting their money from opening a case. So sometimes they do open cases and I think in some ways that that is a good thing for this person if you are going to give them a refund to open a case. But she got her money back then too. And then this seller was smart and blocked the buyer. Well then a couple months go by, I guess, and then this person came back and ordered a third item from her. And this time with a different username but the same address and she was able to connect it together and then she ended up not giving her a refund because again she claimed she didn't get what she ordered and then she just I don't even remember what she said in the email that she sent to the person but essentially it was just saying you know you're not getting your money back and they said that they never did get negative feedback from doing that and they never opened a case that third time. So unfortunately, after waiting a little bit, they didn't go away and I got a message the next day. It seemed like every 24 hours I was getting a message from this buyer and now they were impatient and you know, they're demanding, I sent you pictures, I gave you this information and I don't see any money in my, my PayPal account. If you don't have money to me within the end of the day, I am opening a case and you're getting negative feedback. So at this point I thought, you know, it's really best that I should say something back. So I took some time and tried to think of the best thing possible to respond to this buyer, to be professional and to try to close the door on it so that she wouldn't try to do those things, right? She wouldn't leave feedback, she wouldn't go to eBay. And this is what I ended up saying to her in the end. I said, hi, sorry for the delay in responding. It takes a while for the investigation to be completed. Thanks so much for providing the pictures. Unfortunately, due to the information you have provided and the results of our investigation into your previous transactions on the eBay platform, this purchase and the separate purchase of the Oshkosh tea do not qualify for a refund. Please feel free to contact eBay customer service directly with any further questions or concerns that you may have, and they may be able to assist you further. Thank you for your purchase and have a good day. So I totally just shut the door on her and said, no, you're not getting a refund. And I was also heavily hinting, yeah, I know that you're a scammer. I totally have looked into what you're doing. And eBay, you know, may have been looking into what you're doing and this is not going to fly. After I sent off the email, I did do a little bit of research and found that there is a spot on eBay where you can actually report buyers and say if you think that they are committing a scam. And so then I just reported that they had claimed that they got a different item. And then in the comments, I left a long message and I kind of explained the situation and said, she's done this to several other sellers and you can go back through her emails and see all of this and surely look through all the refunds that she's received because she's received several refunds from buyers. And I also gave them the other username that the other seller had told me to make sure so that they could connect the two people together and hopefully end up blocking her. So I sent that off and of course at the top of the page it says, we can't tell you what happens or what we do, what the outcome is of you know, submitting that you think that there's something going on. And unfortunately then after that I just wasn't sure what was going to happen. But today I was super excited when I went to go do a little bit more research to do this video to see that at the top of her feedback when I went to it, it is now saying no longer a registered user. 
So yay, you know, good news. She is not on the platform anymore, or at least not under that username. And hopefully if she is trying to open another account, the address will be picked up and they'll realize it's the same person or the same email or credit card or whatever information it is that she's using. So really good news there. So what I've learned through this experience is that if you do have a situation where you think that somebody might be scamming you, it's really important to make sure that if you are going to give them a refund that you open a case on eBay before you give it to them. Because if you open a case on eBay, it will give them a history and it's more likely that eBay is going to notice that something is up. It's also a really good idea if you think something's going on to go and to mention it in the feedback. If you do automatic feedback and you've already left something, you can do a follow-up feedback and you can go in and say, you know, the seller claimed they didn't get the item and I ended up giving them back their money or the seller got their item, but they claimed it was a piece of wood or whatever it is, because then it's going to allow other sellers to see that something else is going on as well. It's also really good in these circumstances to make sure that you're calm and professional throughout the whole thing, because I think a lot of people are more likely to push when they think that they're talking to an emotional seller who's just an individual seller rather than a company. So if you can make the impression that you're a company and sound professional like a company would, then they're less likely to push, I would imagine. And overall, in the end, if something like this happens to you, do some research. Go check out their feedback, maybe message a couple of the other sellers so that you don't end up giving them back their money because like this person, they had already bought 44 items before they finally got shut down. And if maybe, you know, the 10th person would have gone and done research and gone to eBay about it, then it would have saved the other 30 items that they bought from being refunded back to her. And so that we can get these scammers off of the platform because it's just a huge headache and nobody likes dealing with it. Nobody likes to lose money. And it's just unfortunate that people even have to go so low to do these scams in the first place. Well, in the end, I hope that this never happens to you, but if it does, hopefully this has given you some ideas of what you can do to solve the problem. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't had a chance, I would love it if you could like and subscribe and be sure to leave me a comment down below. Has this ever happened to you? And if so, what have you done? And thanks so much for watching and have a good day and I will see you in the next one.